But mm. I think I think if the if now right people are uh, finding nets in uh, the bellies of whales, right? What what they will find in two three years, right? Are disposable masks. Oh yeah. Let me just say, I, th- I tell you, I judge everybody who wear a disposable thing? mask. Just now, Vera asked me whether I like the coconut shake. Okay. Yeah, but I don't know how to answer this question because I don't haven't had enough coconut shake. Coconut shake. Like the first, the first and last time I had it was the one that I shared with you at Jewel. It was the Mister Coconut. Ah, yes, Mister Coconut. Right, that's the same as the Pungo one. I assume. Yes. I'm quite sure lah. Yeah. So I've never really had like this coconut thing. I don't know what's the fascination Because uh, every time, every time I, I'm at Pungo, right, the queue is damn as long. But it's good Even when I jewel actually but why? So what's the th- Okay so what makes A good coconut drink I think it's that uh, Well the one that I mean the, Compared to the My tapau item for today mm. You know which is uh, Coco melon Coco melon Is it coco melon Yeah coco yeah, melon um, I prefer the Mr. Coconut Why? Because it's Less Milky Oh the coconut Wait there is the Mr. Coconut one Mr. Coconut one is less milky Yes so oh. you, I can taste more like coconut water, coconut flesh. Vera, Vera said that the Mister Coconut one, uh, is more milky actually, than this. So I'm not too sure. I but don't trust her taste buds. I <laughs> she just revealed to me that she doesn't like any cookie. So what do you mean? Right. Oh my god. So I I just rolled my eyes at hers. I'm like every day I find out something new that you don't like. Yeah. Terrible. Mm. Then she was like, "Remember during Chinese New Year, I don't eat." I'm like, "Yeah, but I thought it was just pineapple tarts." So apparently, yeah, it's I just always, all yeah, cookies. I thought it's just pineapple tarts, right? All okay, okay. Yes. Hi, it's another episode of Tapau Please with Wani and Zat. Yes. So today, uh, okay, we actually talked about our food item. Mm. <laughs> well, my food item. Yep. Uh, and today's uh, main topic will be about the Netflix documentary Seaspiracy. Yeah, Seaspiracy. Yeah. yeah, which I actually watched first. Yeah. Uh, then I told Wani to go and watch it. Lah. Yeah. So since the time that Wani watched it and the time that I watched it in between, I think it's like one and a half weeks ish. I do remember like some of the main gist of it. Lah, okay. But like, you made notes, is it? Yeah, I did. Congratulations. So I'll just lean on your notes because <laughs> I only remember like two things. That really stood out for me from that uh, right. documentary. I just have to preface that um, it was a very difficult documentary for me to watch. Mm. Why? Let's talk about it later. We we will we will we will talk about it later. Mm. Yeah, but first our weekly recap. Food news, right? Uh, yeah, but you want to do weekly recap or food news first? Oh, for Master Chef, is it? Yes. No, we do food news first. Oh, yeah. Okay. <laughs> Okay, so for the food news, right? So recently, one year I went to this uh, cafe at Grandstand. Okay, mm-hmm. I just say that lah. I won't say the cafe's name. Yes. So it's at this. It's at this cafe at at, uh, at Grandstand, and I have never been to Grandstand. Okay, mm. I actually always thought that Grandstand right is at Katip, the horse horse place, oh, right? Yeah. Which apparently uh was where uh it moved from this uh. Grandstand at 6th Avenue mm-hmm. It moved to the Katip one Right? Correct or not? I don't know whether it moved Or there was actually Just two separate uh, Horse racing places Oh wow Singapore needs two no, Separate I, okay. I really do not want to <clears throat> Say <laughs> the untruth okay. So I'm okay. not sure So uh, so we went to the To the grandstand there And first of all What struck me right Was that the place Is quite old mm. It's old It is It's like uh, What's that building? The one at Golden Mile, is it? The one at Boogie's Lavender that area. That 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 building. One the the one the one where the projector is. Oh yeah. Yeah. It's Golden Mile. I, I think it's Golden Mile. Am I right? I, I'm not sure like that building. Like, it's a very old building. And the grandstand really reminds me of that. You know, it is like the kind of building, right, that was built at a, at a time, right, where uh, the brutalist movement was very in in effect lah, so people yeah. don't really care. I mean, like we went up to the tech, to the third and fourth floor, and we're like, "What the hell is this?" Yeah, like where the hell are and we? And that was my first time, so going up, right? Yeah, yeah. So that was my first time being there. Period. So I never been to that place, and so we went to this uh restaurant, and it is very coincidental that I don't really like this restaurant because we just recently only talked about food that is pretty, mm. but with no substance ah. 
and that place is basically it lah right and and it's very annoying that i am seeing uh repeated things like the strawberries mm. <sighs> the, the strawberry, preser- uh, preserve strawberries preserve I think. strawberries and then there's the furikake that was everywhere <laughs> the bacon salt that was everywhere mm. the preserve strawberries bacon salt furikake the toast the toast like, i mean people yeah if you're going to make sourdough toast right if you're going to preserve sourdough right don't toast it because there's really no point in a sourdough toast because you don't get the 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 astringency of sourdough yeah. itself all you're tasting is just hard 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 bread lah it's yeah. almost like a crouton lah which was exactly which is what which was apparently what they wanted to yeah to do lah yeah okay yeah and then and then and then i remember the the salad mm. that was served in a okay. tea cup in a tea cup mm-hmm. and we had to take it out and plate it yeah and replate it ourselves i mean Wow, yeah, it it definitely didn't do justice to the actual salad because it actually was really good. Mm. It's just a waste, la. It's yeah. a damn shame, la. So when I was so 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 when I was writing the review, that's what I said, lah. I said it's like it's like a damn shame that this thing is not that, it's mm. not presented properly, la. Like you 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 value above all things aesthetics, right? Mm. Which also makes sense because a lot of the reviews of the place are from influencers. Yep. And also, you have people who are like, oh, this is so pretty, this is so pretty, but then that's all. I mean, we have, we we have to be a bit more cautionary lah when we talk about things that are pretty. So a lot of places are pretty, but like yeah, insta worthy get insta dusty lah. So that's what I'm saying. That's what I've been saying like a lot. I know time. you have. Yeah. yeah. So that's my food news. Yours? Oh, my food news was actually yesterday, and it's actually a very brief one because it was just a very uh, short observation. One that I would have missed if my fiance did not point it out to me. Mm. So we were at this uh, particular ramen place at Seletar Mall. Okay. There's only one, so you guys can do the snooping around lah. Mm. And then we were just finishing a meal, and then he he was like looking past, like over my shoulder. Then he was like, "Oh, that's actually shouldn't do that. It's very unsanitary." I'm like, "What? What? What did they do?" <laughs> Have you finished your meal by then? Yeah. Okay. <laughs> he was like, "Oh, because they they and I didn't want to turn around to make it very obvious because like the staff was there." Mm. So then she was like, "Yeah, because they were just like they 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 set aside or had they had pre." Prepared um, the hot green tea cups, yep. and they already like put the what is it the tea bags mm. already all inside the cup okay. on a tray, okay. and kept it in the cupboard. Oh, and it's a cupboard that's like um, filled with other things like wiping like cloths oh, and everything. Ugh. So they were like, does it really take that long? To op- like to open a tea bag packet when a customer asks yeah, for it, yeah. like it doesn't save you time. Yeah. And like, oh my god, it, 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 you know. I was like, thank God I ordered the cold green tea, which is the ayataka one. Ah, uh, okay, okay. Because I would have like, yeah. So, uh. but then, but then was the ramen good? I didn't have ramen because apparently I tried the ramen there before. It's not nice. So what do you? Eat? Uh, they had like donburis. Oh, okay. Yeah, I had a unagi one. I mean, over the weekend, right, just to add on to your food news, right, I explored Serangoon Gardens. Oh, yes. Okay, okay I keep my, knocking my mic. This mic is not in the right position. So, uh, yeah, so I went to Serangoon Gardens and I actually wanted to go to Serangoon Gardens because I wanted to go to this shop called All Bout Chicken, right? Because mm. one of our readers mentioned that uh, we should try this place, right? And, the, and, the, and the, it's, a hawker, it's a hawker stall and the owner... Uh, he used to work at a fast food joint. Uh. I don't know which fast food joint, but he used to work in a fast food joint and I decided, okay, I'm going to go there and try for dinner. So I thought, okay, I'm going to go somewhere nearby there uh, to get a drink and do some writing and then I go for dinner. Lah. So of course, I go, of course I, landed, I landed at Baker's and Cook. Right? Uh, then after that, I was walking to the to the, support, uh, the alleged uh, Chom Chom Food Center. But because I seldom go there, so I don't really know what Chom Chom Food Center yeah. looks like. Uh, so I thought that I, I, I went, I, I looked at the map and then it, was, it pointed me to this building. Then when I look at the building, right, the building is closed for renovations. Ah. So I was like, damn it. Right. But then, so I thought, okay, never mind. I'll go eat somewhere else. So I went to eat at uh, Nick and Tom Eatery. Then after I finished eating already, uh, then I went out. I thought I'm going to walk, walk. Lah. Go see around. Because it was such a beautiful, like, cooling evening uh, at, mm. at that point. So I just walked around. And then uh, that's when I thought, that's when I saw Chom Chom. Mm. Then I'm like, oh, Chom Chom is here. And I'm like, damn it. I remember saying, damn it, as I'm walking. So I walked, then I bought the chicken, then I left. Lah. No, I said, then I continued walking around the area. Then I wanted to find a coffee place to sit down. So that's where I said, at Apollo, Apollo Coffee Bar. Right, okay. So I really love the, the, the vibe at Strangoon Gardens. It's different. It, it, 
it, it gives me the feeling that we are at we're not exactly at a too hoity toity place like Holland V mm. but it is not so uh, uh, it, it's, it's not as hoity toity as Holland V but it is also not too casual right. it's a very nice uh, little enclave of like uh, food places and there's a like it's a very pleasant place to be at mm. Uh, I saw like uh, Indian restaurants Like those uh, Semi goreng and, yeah. and there's like Two of them There's a Sri San Prata uh, There's I, there, There's a little Quaint uh, French uh, Supermarket That sells like Really authentic French things uh, What else There's uh, Yeah So I eventually Settled at Apollo and Apollo Coffee Bar And I sat outside And it was just A beautiful Place I'm really like in love with that place. Sa- Saturday, right? Is it Saturday? A beautiful Saturday afternoon. Evening. Evening. Yeah, it's really like, and there's so many facets to it. Right? There's so many areas that you can visit. So I am I quite I quite liked it lah. I'll go back again. We should go back for dinner. We should. I there. don't explore that area enough. Right. Yeah. Right. Then after that, I walk out. You know, because actually there is a bus that takes you out. But I thought you know since I had like food and had drinks, I'm just gonna walk out. It was mm. such a nice weather to walk out. Like oh my god, I really enjoyed that Saturday. Okay. Yeah, and it's so it's so near my place, but I really enjoyed it. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> that's my Sur- that's that's my Serangoon Saturdays. Yes. Now we can talk about Master Chef. Okay. What's uh. your initial <laughs> impression? Okay, you say lah, because I say so many things oh. to you just now. Oh. You start. Yeah. For me, it's more of um, I'm so glad. I'm so glad that Leon bounced back. I was mm. I was actually like clapping in front of my TV like yay Leon, mm. but then after that, yeah I guess it is also like almost like counterbalanced with uh, Zephyr's performance. Mm. Uh, it's so, it's almost you almost cringe inside when you literally see her on screen right crumbling, uh. like just like falling apart mm. and crying while cooking. Yeah, she's, yeah. she's just like. Yeah, <laughs> and the camera really like, got a good shot. Yeah, eh? like we zoom up right to her face, yeah. her her tear drenched mm. cheeks, and yeah. her red puffy eyes, and she's yeah. like, "Okay, okay, I'm gonna continue." <laughs> it's like you feel so bad for her. Yeah, but like you can't do anything, obviously. So, I like the the the, the thing I like about this challenge is the, uh, the recipe. Like I like I like that they had to follow a recipe. Mm. Uh, I think. It's not just enough for you to know how to follow a recipe, but of course, if you do follow the recipe, at least you got like seventy percent of it right. So the thirty percent right is like uh, your skills uh, whether you've mm. done it before. Like there was one time where Ganesh, uh, Ganesh had to Ganesh had to he he read the instruction and the instruction said to fold in gently, <laughs> and he whisked. Yeah, I'm like. <laughs> That's not folding in gently. You should know how to fold in gently. And then he folded in gently, right? He just whisked slowly. Yeah. <laughs> Like come on, uh yeah. So it's not just that like, and and I really kind of I really can't stand it like when people enter Master Chef right and say desserts are not my forte. <laughs> yeah, they're like ah yeah, desserts are not my thing. Yeah, I mean like it's like going into RuPaul and saying you can't sew, <laughs> you can't sew a damn dress, or you join Project Project Runway and you say that you can't. You can sew, yeah. But there actually there are contestants on Project Memory who really yeah, it, like. yeah, yeah, yeah. But then they struggle. <laughs> yeah, they struggle, they struggle. They struggle with it. So if you want, if you want to, if you want to join Master Chef, right, you cannot say, oh, I only am very good at making Asian dishes. I cannot lah. Then you enter Master Chef, you very brave, ah. Huh? Yeah. Like you know that Master Chef has like all sorts of like challenges. You know, you should at least know how to do the the basics of the basics. For example. Uh, if you know how you should learn, you should learn how to fillet a fish. You should learn how to uh, shark an oyster. You should learn how to uh, make a very simple roux. Things like that, lah. Mm. You know, and, and or not, even to portion a whole chicken. Ah, uh, yeah, a, a debone, right? Like uh, a not debone, like <coughs> portion. So you have a whole chicken to cut it uh, into yes. the appropriate yeah. pieces. I'm yeah. sure, like okay, I I definitely actually wouldn't know how to appropriately portion a chicken. Mm. To be honest. So. It's all it's all about the preparation, like the pre preparation at home, lah. Yeah. You have to really be involved in the world of cooking, lor. 
before you can start to do this I would like I won't join Master Chef because I'm not very good at like a lot of like cooking matters I mean I cook but I'm not very good at like whether desserts mm. but I'm not really very good in desserts uh, I understand the science behind it but I'm not very good at it so if I were to join that would be something that I'll be doing like, for at least like a year or a year and a half or you can learn from uh, chefs mm. and things like that like. that's why Derek did so well in this dessert, like in this challenge, because I know that he will do very well. Yeah, Leon, and he finished so fast. Yeah, that Le- Leon won. Uh, I mean, it's a good like comeback story. Yeah, right. But I, I suppose, uh, Derek's speed at doing it is like some is quite commendable. Oh uh. yeah, for sure. Yeah, for sure. like I, I, I like I like that. Uh, who I think is Trisha. He said I filled up the silicone mold uh. halfway. Oh yeah, and then um. The chef was like, uh, oh yeah, he said, uh, how come it's only halfway, right? Yeah. And then she said, oh, because the other side got a hole. Yeah, and then she's like, there's a reason for she's that like, hole. don't you think? Like, there's a reason <coughs> for that? Yeah. And then she's like, hmm. Mm, you're right. Yeah. Okay, okay. Yeah. So, who who who, who got voted up? Uh, Ganesh. Ganesh. Yeah, deserved. Yeah. I also, I, I was like, yes, it is about time. Because I feel like he is... I feel like his passion for cooking, right, is not in competitive cooking. Mm. Like, he's good at what he's comfortable with. Mm. And that's fine. Like, honestly, that's for, that's most of us. We only cook the things that we are very comfortable with all the time. And we do it repeatedly and we yeah. never venture beyond. So this for him was definitely, like, you know, out, way, way out of his comfort yeah. zone. And I could see that he was, like, relying on, like, let's just try my best. See how lah mm. I don't know mm. And then it's like You can't really go Further than that If that's really your attitude Yeah And you could see That that was his Limit for his skills Right now Yep So like it was just time mm. Like it was just time for him Agreed Yeah so I was very happy So uh, uh, Yeah sadly I was very happy That he was eliminated Okay now that we are down to Five right Who do yeah. you think will win? I don't know who Win Win But I really want to see At least in the top Three mm. Uh, of course, Noor. Mm. And she didn't. Do you realize she didn't really cry this uh, this episode? Yes. For it took se- it took si- six se- seven episodes for her to not finally not cry. Mm. Somebody took over. <laughs> <laughs> like wow! I was so shocked. I was like, I was really she she gonna she gonna. Mm. Yeah, but um. So I hope obviously one of them is Noor. Mm. The other one is Leon mm. and Derek. So those three, right, uh-huh. are the strongest right now. Yes, yes, and agreed. They, and they really deserve to be in the top three. Mm. But then it'd be very hard to see who will really emerge the winner. Like, because they are all have their own strengths. Like for yeah. Noor, it's desserts, right? And then for Derek, it's like for very more complex things. And then for Leon, I feel like it's a good mix of mix both. both. Yeah. So yeah. so I would want Leon to win. Yeah. I think Leon is will make a good winner and he's a kind of chef where like we I think I will enjoy eating at his restaurant. Uh. Mm. Yeah, I feel I think Noor uh, a bit of hit and miss sometimes. Uh Derek might as I said last week, all I'll be good like I feel like every dish will be a bit overthink. Uh over overthought lah. Mm. They'll be like a bit too complex and you like yeah, it's really like trying too hard la. Oh. Yeah, yeah, I guess Leon is the very uh, good middle. Yeah, a very good down to earth. Yeah. I actually wouldn't middle. mind, right, if Leon actually started having uh, cooking classes. Mm. Like I think he uh, and and he does already, right? He, yeah. he has students. I wouldn't mind being one of his like students for mm. an afternoon and he teaches me to to cook. Okay. Yeah. yeah. I think I think if you want we can invite like the top three, yeah. I don't know how we can do it, but I'm sure we can invite them. Maybe the top two. Okay, when we finally know who they are. Yeah, I'm sure Media Corp already knows who the final two are. Oh yeah, of course lah. Yeah. Yep, and that's the MasterChef recap. So if you all haven't watched it yet, you can watch MasterChef on Me Watch. Yes. Uh, this is not a sponsored show. It's just like something that we really love to do. We really love to watch. Yeah, so okay. you can watch me. Uh, you can watch MasterChef season two on MeWatch.com, I think. Yeah. And they have reruns on YouTube, ah. Uh. So like like you watch it live on Me Watch, then the next day, if you missed it, the next day it will be on YouTube. Oh, but you, Me Watch has it also for the whole. Oh yeah, okay, yeah. So yeah, so you can watch it. Of it. Yeah. Yeah, so you can watch it on Me Watch, unless of course you have YouTube Premium like me. Then of course yes, you should watch it on YouTube. <laughs> okay, on to the next topic, which is the conspiracy. There's too many S's in this word. Conspiracy. S three S's. Must work like that. Conspiracy. Conspiracy. Yes, so I said earlier it was very difficult for me to watch and I didn't really go into watching it uh, having any expectations. I didn't read about it. I just know that it's an 
uh, it's a documentary on marine life yes. conservation. Full yep. stop. Okay. Something like that. Yep, yep. And then I just watched, and I was like, oh, it's this kind <laughs> of show where it's so <clears throat> graphic, yeah. and they scare you with numbers, and obviously there's a lot of, I wouldn't even say guilt tripping, it's just to make you more aware of how much damage you are doing as a consumer of seafood, right? Yes. But I think the part that really got me was like, because I don't know if you know, but I really love dolphins. Okay. And... I love dolphins so much that when I was younger, right? Which is why I love the ocean. I love being by the beach. It's something I've loved since very young. Mm. And when I was growing up, I was always drawn to like a uh, dolphin like jewelry. Mm. So I had like rings, I had necklaces, <laughs> I had earrings. Even <laughs> tacky, eh? But I mean, as a little girl, yeah, yeah. it's not. I mean, I don't wear it all at the same time. <laughs> I hope not. <laughs> yeah, so I have like all these like dolphin jewelry. Mm. And I have like dolphin little like decals, steel yeah. cales and stuff. So yeah, so knowing about like obviously, and I'm very aware of like the whole Faroe Islands thing and uh, bycatch in fishing, uh, f- tro- troll fishing? Mm. Yeah, troll fishing. I'm very aware yeah. of that, but like seeing it visually is quite horrifying. But then before before we get too ahead of ourselves, right? So conspiracy. C- 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 it's a show on Netflix. Y'all can catch it on Netflix. Mm. So what so what the show is about, right, is that it talks about the conspiracy behind seafood. Yeah. Uh fish. I think generally fish lah. Yeah. Yeah. The, gen- uh, yeah, the, uh, yeah, fish. Seafood industry, but fish specifically uh, fish that centric. they address. Yeah. Yes. So they talk about uh where uh they talk about whale killing. Yeah. Right? They talk about do- uh, whale farming. Uh they talk about uh how we and our insatiable appetite for uh, seafood mm. has caused this uh, w- uh, like worldwide trade of uh, seafood lah, right? The worldwide the, 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 the dangerous worldwide trade of seafood. Mm. Uh, so basically, basically that's the gist of it. Uh, so if you all want to watch, you can watch it on Netflix lah. It just came out like three weeks ago. So, uh, because I watched it quite a while back, right? And I didn't take notes. But what I do remember, because the ones that I still remember now are the ones, obviously, that are, that sticks uh, that sticks with me. So, the first thing that sticks with me is that the whole uh, dolphin-free... Dolphin-safe label? The dolphin-safe label is not true. Mm. So, as I was watching the show, and they're talking about this, right, I actually went to Google it, you know, like, mm. oh, like what, what this thing is about. And then, in the show, right, this, they did an interview with the founder, right? One of the founder, one of the members yeah. yes. or something. And he said, oh my god, it's such a frustrating interview. Because he, he's, being, he's being so nonchalant about it. He's yeah. being so like, uh, yeah, I can't really confirm yeah. that, it, that everything is... Uh, dolphin safe Like nothing is guaranteed Nothing is guaranteed like, yeah. Then then how do you get The label Yeah then he says Yeah but we can guarantee That it's dolphin safe But you just said, said You can't guarantee. guarantee Yeah He said it, it's just the nature Yeah Like it is what it is Yeah so that's the first big, The first uh, takeaway I had The second takeaway I had Was when I when, Was when someone said uh, The best way to To tackle uh, Water pollution right uh, The The I say like Rubbish in the sea mm. is okay. So the the most glamorous, the most obvious thing that we, that have been told by us that has been told by us to do right is to not use straws. Mm, plastic right? straws. Yeah. Plastic straws. Because all because all you need to do is to see the image of a straw up the the nose of an of a tortoise, and then you like everyone's like, hey, yeah, we cannot use plastic straw. We cannot use plastic straw. Oh, oh we don't use plastic bag. We don't use plastic bag. But then, like a good percentage of uh rubbish debris in the sea is fishing nets, mm. and. When the documentary uh, creator went to talk to one of the biggest uh, uh, organization, I can't even remember the name. One of the biggest organization about why they don't put this uh, this disclaimer to say like you know if you want to really save the world, you have to stop eating fish, because it's only when you stop eating fish that people will stop fishing for it, and then it will save the it will save the 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 oceans ah. mm. because because uh, when they were when when they did an autopsy uh, of uh, some of the washed up whales yeah, the right whales, yeah. yeah there were like fishing nets inside the majority of the, mm. the the rubbish inside is fishing net lah so but then this this uh, organization was being very sketchy about it and said no i'm not going to talk about this yeah. you know, and things like that lah because basically what the documentary is trying to allude is that everyone has a like there's a conspiracy going on, uh, like everyone has a part to play 
in uh, making sure that the fishing industry still continues. Uh. Yeah. Yeah. For me, uh, and not only that, as in they also, uh, there was one um, particular agency or association mm. that said that um, uh, they, 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 there were two representatives who were kind of like contradicting each yes, other. Yes. Like they were saying that, or oh, she said that is to uh, eat less or cut out fish. Mm. And then like her boss or something, her, yep. the founder or yeah. CEO, VP, whatever, yeah. said that, no, she never said that. And then they they showed, re-showed that footage of her saying yeah. it. And then, yeah. So even within an organization, mm. there seems to be a lot of... Uh, <sighs> Misunderstanding. misunderstanding they obviously don't know yeah. what they're really fighting for yeah True. okay so following up from what was said just now about mm. the fishing net thing right it's really strange because i never thought about it like because fishing net is something that is not in our lives like yeah. we, we don't involve ourselves with fishing yeah. nets yeah. so we involve ourselves with plastic bags uh, plastic straws styrofoam boxes stuff like that mm. so you know, it's a it's really an eye opener lah to see this documentary shed light on like mm. what actually is killing um, uh, the marine life when they ingest all these kind of like raw materials mm. lah. Um, yeah, what 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 was more saddening was that like sci- that scientific marine biology research right is really overshadowed by um, by bigger corporations. That are in a conspiracy to kind of propel the mm. fishing industry. Allegedly, like allegedly. Like, but like the yeah. way that this uh, documentary is framed, mm. it's it seems like the the people that he talked to, which are like really scientists yeah. in marine bi- biology, right? The research doesn't matter. It feels like the research is not being recognized and adopted by by these organizations who claim to want to save the mm. ocean. Like they are still in like cahoots with bigger fishing yep. uh, companies, yep, yep. just so that they can increase their catch or mm. whatever. Not lah. Yeah, but that but that also boils down to the fact that there is still a worldwide demand for it, ma. Yeah, which yeah. is hen- uh, hence, yeah, I guess that's the whole, you know, plant based movement yeah. to eat more I mean, greens. I mean, there's, I'm sure, I'm sure there's a reason why uh, the number of sharks, uh, shark, shark, fam- shark farming, uh, shark farming, shark farming, like shark fin, the, uh, shark fin farming has mm-hmm. dropped. Because many people are like really rejecting that whole idea of sharks fins, uh, eating sharks fins, things like that lah. So it does really start with the consumer. But mm. I think I think if they, if now right people are uh, finding nets in uh, the bellies of whales, right? What what they will find in two three years, right? Are disposable masks. Oh yeah. Let me just say, I, th- I tell you, I judge everybody who wear a disposable thing? mask, like. You cannot say that, oh, you know, it's very, it's very comfortable. <laughs> yeah, but, you know, that thing has yeah. to go somewhere, right? Yeah. Then according to my friend on Facebook, he said that uh, in Singapore, the disposable masks are burned. Of course, uh, they're not thrown in the sea. Uh, uh, yeah, they're yeah, yeah, being uh, at the landfill, then they're burned, right? Yeah. Then I said, yeah, that's even worse, isn't it? Like it contributes to, 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 to the thinning of the environment and So the which, which do you want? You want water pollution or you want land, field, land pollution or you want air pollution? Yeah, like what Choose are we your doing? Evil. Like what are we doing with our country with, the, with, the, with, the, with this planet? It, it really scares me, especially really especially this mass thing. When I go on the train, I, I remember I was, I was once on the train uh, from Singkang, right? And the whole front row in front of me, they were all wearing disposable masks. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, it is. It is really scary because if we try and tackle one source of, uh, say, essentially trash, mm. we manage to find something else to re- uh, to to uh, take over or to replace yeah. that trash. Mm. So, like you say, uh, if it's not uh, plastic straws, then it's this was on us. Yeah, and we've taken such and we 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 have taken uh, we have made such great strides in. Like not using disposable like plastic, you know when 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 there's buffets right, they give you those like corn mm. things right. My God, all this work right, we just have gone down the drain, just because of one pandemic and everyone starts to wear masks and, oh, this is very disconcerting. Uh. to me this is quite disconcerting. Yeah, but we still haven't even tackled the issue of plastic bag. Yeah, to be honest. I mean we are slowly tackling the issue. Uh, <laughs> yeah. okay, do you know that if you go to I don't know which bubble tea? Oh. Uh, recently, I went to Wubi, mm. Wubi bubble tea, right? Uh, I might be wrong, uh, but if I remember correctly, if you use your own bottle, right, they will give you 30, 30, 30 cents off. 
Okay. Yeah, which which gives good uh incentive lah for people to to bring their own bottles ah. Right. Yeah. Do, do you bring like your own like little tote bag when you go out? Like just in case you buy something so you don't have to ask oh, for no. plastic bag. I usually plan those things. Like okay. Yeah. <laughs> or you never on a whim never. like suddenly hey I need to drop by like Watson's. No. I forgot I need to <laughs> I mean there was once I went to the uh, I went I went to the supermarket and I and I bought something and I carried it home. Like I put whatever is it, I put the fresh produce in my bag uh-huh. and then I just carry it whatever I cannot carry, I just carry it in my hand. And I think it was quite a ridiculous thing to carry. I think it was like wiper sheets uh, oh. or something. But I mean if it's close by it's fine. Because yeah. like for me now, whenever me and Zahi go out, right, we always bring just at least one tote bag. Oh. Because we always manage to find something to buy. Yeah. So we never uh it's not just about not paying the extra ten cent. It's like why do I need a whole plastic bag for every shop that I go to? Mm. You know, it, oh, but then right. Speaking, yeah. speaking of this, right. Recently, I went to Sheng Siong and I saw an auntie. Of course, it's an auntie. It's an uncle. It's an auntie and an uncle. Uh, you know those uh, small plastic bags that you use to store fruits and vegetables, right? Mm-hmm. They were just like going at it, no? Oh, you mean the clear? Ah, the clear plastic. The, just like. What did they do? I don't know. And it would take like 15, 20 just. And they kept it in the bag. And they fold and they put in their bag. Like, I think it's for home la. I mean, but, but <laughs> I uh, like they don't want to <laughs> but I don't know why they want to buy but annoying but yeah, yeah. but then but then okay so back to the conspiracy conspiracy right yeah. uh, any other takeaways yeah so the second half of the documentary was on sustainable fishing right mm. yikes like to be revealed that sustainable fishing is a hoax. A hoax yeah. Is it the is it is it the salmon one? It's the salmon one and uh yeah they they talked they talked about uh um farm fish in general, not mm. just salmon. Mm. But they were talking about like there is no way it is sustainable in the in the way that sus- the word sustainable is meant to represent. Mm. Because like then that's when they introduced the whole Faroe Islands thing. Okay, what's, what's, what's this Faroe Island thing? So they uh, I forgot. They uh. slaughter. They have this. I don't know how how often they do. I think it's oh, annual the, or is the it sustainable whale uh, whale uh, ki- killing? Yeah, sustainable yeah. whale killing, right? Yes. Yeah, yeah. And I never knew about it. No, what, what can you explain a bit? It's like a it, it's a tradition. Mm. I don't know how often they do it. I don't know if it's annual, biannual. Okay, what's but, the tradition? Explain to the read to the listeners. But I don't know the exact tradition. Mm. I know that it happens at least once a year, mm. where they rally like uh, the same as in Japan, where they rally the the dolphins. And mm. these are obviously the dolphins that are native to those waters. It's not like your normal do- bottle nose dolphin. Mm-hmm. It's something else. Um, and then they drive them to the shore, so they get beached and a bit like disorientated, and then they just like slice. Oh. And they make a lot of noise, so the so they get like very very uh, lost. So they don't know like uh, where this is like beach, mm. but there's people. Then like where do I go? Yeah, yeah, yeah. And then they just like slaughter them. Why do they do this? It's just, uh, I it, I think it plays into tra- tradition, but it's their way of hunting sustainably. Because they it's a very controlled thing. It's only in that region. It's not like and they only consume oh. it for themselves. Oh. So it's not like they go export like. You know. Yeah, yeah, it's for themselves. Yeah, yeah. So one yeah. of the one of the person that they interviewed said, "I can eat like what? Yes. Three, three chicken or oh yeah. Three he was talking about two hundred chickens versus yeah. one whale. One, one whale. He was like, I understand. I understand your 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 whole thing with like me killing one whale, but you over there on the other side of the earth, you eat two hundred chickens over like a year, for example. Mm. So you can't you can't you know you can't hate me for it yeah. because that that one whale can feed me for the same duration mm. for example mm. so it's like are you am i really better than you, mm. you that's know? true yeah so in that sense that's why the 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 director of the documentary who was like saying so i guess this is really the only way to be sustainable because he never thought about <laughs> the feelings of animals when it came uh, to sustainability yeah, he yeah. just thought about oh what are the human impacts what's the global impact but we never talked about the animals feelings impact and then they yeah. started talking about like do animals really actually have yeah. feelings yeah so that was the conclusion right? that was the end of the film yeah, yeah. The, uh, one one image that really struck me right was when the, uh, they were they were outside the fish tank then there was a fish that was being caught and being slaughtered and all the fish were watching it yo. Oh, it was so bad. But really, the 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 uh, part of the whole documentary that actually got me, uh, like, 
really upset was the whole Pharaoh thing because I, I I've seen pictures of it. But to see but, video, but I've different. never seen a video, and they like really did a close yes. up. Like I was sobbing, eh. I yeah. was really crying. I it it took me a while to actually like compose myself because I had to look away from the TV. Yeah, like I is. know I know that it's there, but I don't want <laughs> to look at it. And then I was like, just crying and crying and crying yeah. because it's like no, I can't. Yeah, it is very graphic, eh, ladies and gentlemen who yeah. are listening. If you're going to watch this, right, just be prepared for the scene when they're at the Faroe Islands because it's, it moves very fast. Yes, the scene moves very fast. So they got a call. They're like, okay, it's happening now. Mm. Then they quickly quickly go to the to the beach side and then. Yeah, and then it just happens. Then the 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 the, the whales, whales, right? Yeah, they're whales. Yeah, the whales start start coming in and start to step, step, step. Then you can see blood, and everything is just bloody, and yeah, it's quite it's quite graphic, lah. So yeah. you have been warned. Yeah, it is. It's it's a very good education, but it's a, a oh my god, it's not something that maybe if you want to teach your kids about <laughs> mm. about o- uh, ocean conservation, maybe not the first. Documentary you want yeah. to show them? It's it's just pretty brutal. But then, yeah. Uh, when for us in the food industry, right? Because we have we we are so intrinsically in the food industry, and then for for us to say things like oh we need to be sustainable, we need to do plant based, right? I think we speak from a place of uh privilege, mm. lah. Because uh, of course we know, right? But then what makes the most difference, right? Are not people like us. I I it's not it's not it's not people like us. I feel it's more like people, the ordinary everyday people. Uh, the other other auntie uncle, mm. uh, mother father, right? Who don't really care oh. for these things, right? Uh, it's very difficult, lah. To, like, so to eat sustain, to eat sustainably, to to make sure that the fish uh is caught in a in a in a sustainable way and things like that, lah. So they're more like oh, this one very cheap, just buy lor. Yeah. Although, uh, ladies and gentlemen, really there is no such thing as sustainable. Ah, uh, okay, okay. Like oh. they have. Like they, they, he he spoke to quite a few people uh, uh, on documentary. Like there is really no such thing. Mm. You the you will somehow cause a uh, in effect, effect on yeah. on like the the sc- uh, school blah, the fish population or like um in terms of uh pollution mm. and stuff like that. It's also similar to I suppose like uh like recently I I saw one of our friends tweet. Uh, he said that uh, those of you who are making a big deal about plant based, right? Plant based foods, right? And then y'all think that you're doing you're doing better. Uh, but the output of plant based meals and plant based f- uh, plant based things, right? Some of them are also a little bit questionable. Mm. So in my head, I'm like, yeah, that's probably right. But then in that case, right? Then what can we do? So I think if we have to choose between the two evils, right? We just have to choose the less evil one. Yeah, less evil. Yeah, and then ho- hopefully that hopefully that like really makes a difference. Uh. I think in Singapore. A lot of the fish that we eat, right, is uh, farmed in Singapore. From I, I don't know whether most of it, but there is there a is good a proportion. Yeah, 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 and 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 there are like I I, did, I was was a bit surprised to know, to know from yesterday's Master Chef that there are, there are around two hundred fish farms. Yeah, I know, right? In Singapore, right? Two hundred. So where? Like where? <laughs> where is all these two hundred fish farms? I was like, I only thought like maybe ten. Eight, ten, yeah. <laughs> Two hundred is a lot, eh? How like we are we like I feel like then we as consumers, right? We are not educated enough. Mm. Like for sure, if we as people who work in the industry do not know there's about two hundred of these farms, what more a, a normal like you know just an average Singaporean yeah. who goes to cold storage? Mm. Do you know that you can get your fish from like local local fisheries? fishing? Yeah. 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 So that's so that's a little bit disconcerting uh, for me to know. Yeah. Uh, and for me not to know so lah in yeah. uh, in a sense. Yeah. So, the, did that did that um uh, after everything is said and done did that make you feel a little bit like guilty and wanting to make a few changes in your eating? I think habits? in in terms of eating, right? Uh, I don't get to choose a lot of the things that I eat, right? So, but so if I do get to choose the things that I eat, most of the time, like right now, right? Uh, like right now, I am very obsessed with uh, making the perfect basil Thai basil chicken, like. Okay. Perfect. Like yeah. I am. Like I want to make the perfect Thai basil chicken. So uh, I will use the Omni meat, no? mm. Yeah, I'll use the Omni meat to make it. So yesterday I bought it. It's not the most cheapest thing. Uh. I mean, it's seven dollars, mm. right? For two hundred fifty grams. Uh, so I think a normal beef thing. And then the thing is, when you cook beef, right, you get the rendered fat yeah. and things, the juice like that. But then for Omni meat, you don't get those things, uh. So you mm. do miss out a little bit on some things. Mm. Uh, yeah. So, so in terms of uh, food sustainability and things like this, right? For me, it is less about what I eat. It's more like the places that I go, mm. right? Uh, what are they? How 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 are they preventing this? But then also, I don't really take it into consideration yet, lah. 
I should, but I'm not yet. Yeah, maybe we all should. Because I, I can tell you, it made me feel immensely guilty. Mm. Like the, emotion, <laughs> the emotional guilt for eating fish. And then the, the secondary, like chicken and beef, which is more, a little bit more common than say fish. La. So as it is, right, I eat actually very little beef. Uh, at home I don't buy beef To mm. cook at home I only make it a point If I want to I get a burger outside Or mm. like Through my tastings Right So I like to believe That I'm making Like baby steps mm. Like just little small steps mm. But I guess uh, I think We're trying to Like just At home Trying to incorporate A lot more vegetables And I, I'm actually Buying more plant based stuff mm. Just because It makes sense to Cook it at home For yourself When you know That you're not Going to necessarily Want to buy Pay for that price yeah. On a restaurant price yeah. Outside it's still cheaper than e- mm. eating at home. Mm. Yeah. So my takeaway was like, I think there's no price to conscience. Okay. That's my... That's fair. Yeah. It, it, really, it really makes me feel very, very bad for mm. how much like meat I'm eating. I think, okay, yeah. my, my, one of the bigger takeaways for me, right, is that I like that this documentary, right, is not qualitative. It's very mm. quantitative. Mm. So you have numbers, you have yeah. facts, you have figures. So I think those are the things that are very scary. La. So if anybody wants to like uh, say like, oh, uh, this is not true, right? You actually have to fight the numbers, la, which is very difficult if you don't really have uh, facts and information on your side. Uh, yeah, so of course we have watched like the cows, the beef uh-huh. uh, documentary. Uh, and then recently there was a study done about uh, the 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 kind of carbon footprint that n- bigger nations in the world live, like the like how how much carbon footprint are they living, uh, and Singapore is like one of the highest. Eh? I'm not. Su- I'm really not surprised. And we we are similar to Brazil, and Brazil is so, so big. Much bigger, so much bigger. <laughs> I'm like, wow, this is what affluence does. Yeah, this is what affluence does. This is what opening up cafes left right center and focusing on beautiful food right this is what it does you know instead of talking about like the nature and the quality of like the, the produce that you give that you bring right yeah. you instead focus on like can we make this pretty ah yeah let's make this pretty then when you make this, when you, and, then, and then and then when you make things pretty right you tend to have like food waste mm. and things like that so it, everything everything that people do uh, does uh, make a difference huh? yeah yeah. So if you want to watch, you can watch Seaspiracy. Seaspiracy. So it's like conspiracy, but with a C. Yep. S-E-A, not the letter. So S-E-A, Spiracy on Netflix. Yeah. I think you should. I think regardless of, I feel like if you don't watch it, right, you just choose to be ignorant mm. and you shouldn't be 2021. Uh, so even if you have no personal feelings like I do about the ocean and mm. you don't really give two hoots about it you're like yeah, eat, well, I eat lah I mean mm. it's like I'm only one person mm. okay keep thinking that then yeah. then you and like a billion other people also probably so, think that way yeah. like yeah it's just me it's just I'm only one person what can I do to change mm. well that's also how voting works yeah. but anyway <laughs> <laughs> yeah the whole point is that I think you should watch it regardless even if it doesn't change your mind but you should at least make that choice with knowledge lah mm. yep. yep and with that we have come to the end of the podcast yes and this is Wani and I'm Zad. And yeah. for those of you who are watching us on YouTube, hi. Uh, <laughs> okay, Say hi, hi. okay. Okay, yeah, yeah. Bye bye. Till the this next episode. A, this is us breaking the fourth wall. Yeah, till the next oh. episode. <laughs> Take care and eat well. Bye. Bye.